So I'm gonna gonna do just a quick overview on how do how to apply design into contracts. So first, what what I'm doing here? I mean, what's what's my job here? Well, of course, you know, the designer is the guy to, that came af comes after Fabian done his job and just make it prettier, right? So I, I don't really see it that way. I think that the purpose of the interface, of course, is to translate the code into the, what the user user sees. So in the same way, the purpose of the interface designer is to be some sort of translator between the developer and the end user. So I think it's important that the purpose of the designer is to be the guy that tries to connect the, the two words. And in order to do that, you need to do something that designers don't like really to do, which is understanding the code and understanding what's going on under. under. I mean, of course, it's not the job of the designer to develop, but he, if he doesn't understand what he's de he designing, he, he will not be doing a very good job at designing anything. So here's an example. So the first time that Christian came up with this code, we, we are talking and we are ch exchanging ideas. This was the, the first layout of the, of the purchase function. And you might notice that, I mean, it just looks like something we, we saw, but there is this one detail, which is the buyer was set at the contract uh, when the contract was created, which made the, my job needed that the way that someone would interact with the contract was the seller would announce the price of blockchain, the buyer would answer him, look, I want to buy your stuff, and then the seller would deploy, would get the contract, the address from the buyer, deploy the contract, and communicate the address of the contract back to the buyer. And then the buyer needs to send the money to a contract, which in some sense might make sense, and there are some advantages to it, but it creates a lot of problems. It makes the, the, the interface a lot more complicated and, and creates a lot of problems, like what if the buyer ne never answers back? What if, what if the buyer disappears? Then you have to add a, some way to refund. So if you need to refund anyway, so why do you need to create the seller in the beginning? So that's why now we decided that the seller just puts the, the seller doesn't define who the buyer is. The buyer defines himself by actually giving the money. So if the buyer doesn't deposit the money, he's not the buyer, which makes sense and simplifies my job because now the seller deploys the contract with already the price information, so the way that he communicates the price is via the contract, and then all, he has to do, uh, all the buyer has to do is send money to the contract, which makes more, it's easier for both of them and simplifies the, what we need to do. So now take, let's take another look at the contract, and that's all the functions that the interface has to do. So you have to imagine that the interface needs to be able to abort, to confirm the purchase, to confirm the received. So it's probably something that we need four buttons and we need to add somewhere. You can add the address of the contract so you can interact with it. But before we go there and try to design it on Photoshop, let's try to think about, let's try to simplify it. So if you remove it, you see that those are the functions and those are the modifiers of the functions. And if you try to rearrange them, you notice that we have like three states and we have three, two states and they can be in three conditions. And there's only one function that you can actually do. Meaning that, and you have to remember that a DAP can know who the other person is. So in a DAP has, can ask him for access, asking for the user, look, who, who are you? Give me the address of your if account so I can recognize you. Meaning that the app knows if she's talking to she, it is talking to the seller, the buyer, or anyone else. Meaning that actually what happens is that if you, and since the states are, doesn't happen all the time, it means that there are always only one single function you can do. So if there is no buyer and it's, if there's no buyer, then the seller can abort the purchase or anyone else can confirm the purchase. If there is a buyer already, then the seller can refund and the buyer can confirm receives. And everything else is just a state that is active. Meaning that actually we don't need to de design the whole app. We can realize that the app is just a button. 
We don't need to do the whole app of a buying and selling. Actually, the, our whole design process is that it is it's realizing that the app is a single button, which is kind of cool because Don Tap Scott was talking about how, how the next Uber could actually be the car that owns itself and it's doing like the transactions. And this is a very nice example of a button that holds the money itself. So which you think I, I think it's kind of cool and takes me to the second point, which is you shouldn't try to design too, to try to, to do too much when you're trying to design a app. So of course, this is a great app. We could think about all the, all the ways you can build a marketplace. You can build an Amazon.com. You can build an eBay, trustless eBay. You, you can add search functions. But you don't need to do it right now. Actually, since it's a very decentralized tool, tool set, if you just build a single button and allow other people to use your button, that might be a, business, a viable business model. Because you might like charge a few cents for people to use your button. And of course, they can deploy their own contracts if you want. But that's your job to, to convince them why they should be using your contract or that they have to pay. Which is interesting, because you can imagine a web where instead of you going to Amazon, and Amazon builds the whole page, maybe Amazon has a, a single card that it's from another, uh, another developer. And it's, uh, uh, it, we are, think less about big portals and think about a bunch of components that can work together in a new web. Now, a third point, which is a more design-oriented thing, is just w when we are, we are talking about depth, we want to be able to distribute them on, the, on, on a BitTorrent-like network, an IPFS and Swarm. So fonts the fonts you use should be open source that you can distribute them. Those are some great examples of, of open source fonts. We use SourceSense Source Pro for Myth and for most of our apps, sometimes Montserrat, but those are other are great. I kept LibreBarsky review there because it's my favorite ampersand. I love ampersands. And my fourth point is that use grids that applies to everything that the designer makes. We use this little grid here, which is kind of weird if you say if you take a look at it, but it has we use 32 pixel by 18.4. Why do I use a height of 18.4? For the simple reason that it allows me to have hexagons on my grid, which is nice because it allows you to centralize circles, which is something that is always cool with, with, with some designs. And also, we use 32, 32 pixels because it's the divisor of 320, 480, 960, 1024, which is and a bunch of other sizes, which, if you, which are great for mobile, which are great for multiple screens. Finally, test, test, test. Always test whatever you do. So normally, when I first started, I always used whoever is in the office as the first. The, the best test is just grab someone who's not working your project, show something, and ask him a dumb question like, OK, what is this that you are seeing? And never, never answer to him. Just let him answer you. But since I work from home now, which made that kind of complicated, I, I was forced to find other, other sites that would allow me to do that, which I found a great some greats like Usability Hub, I highly recommend it. Envision, I really recommend it. So for example, in our design process, uh, instead of building a document saying what the interface should look like, we build an Envision document that has all the screens linked. And I can show you, I can show the developers, I can show some users, so they can, all they have to do to understand how an interface works, they click, click, click around, and they, they will be able to, to, to to see, to see how the app is going to feel like. This is a great tool for, for exploring for everyone. And the next thing I always use is Usability Hub, which is a great way to do quick design tests. Mm -hmm. So this was the first design of the Aleph 1 Miner, which is a CPP tool for allowing a quick, quick one-button mining, which is a great tool, but it, the first design was very kind of nerdy and complicated, and, and I suggested a new design where part of it, we remove the few buttons, like the CPU mining, it doesn't make sense, and we just have one button that's called start mining and withdraw rewards, because that's actually what people want. And one of the, in the process of convincing that this design made sense, because I think, I think it felt like it made, it made sense, but sometimes you need some numbers, so I run it 
run it in a usability test, which is a way that you can have uh, 20 people like clicking your design around from all over the internet, and I just ask them, look, this is a this is some some app that uses your CPU and gives you money. So I want you to turn the app on and try to collect your winnings. And you can see that on the first app, people were like clicking all around. They had no idea where uh, what it was, and they couldn't get to the next point. And on the second version, everyone was mostly clicking just on those two buttons. And we were able to switch the overall rate of people having success on the first try, on the first click, from 30% only to 70% only, which I think is a great it's a great success and show how, how important it is to, to test it constantly. And sometimes you can test just logos. For example, this is the first logo for Mist. And of course, you can see that's a wave inside a diamond. So I, I think it's so obvious that I almost didn't test it. But I decided to test it anyway. And that's how the internet described it. It's just a, like a diamond with a shape with purple. And then I, maybe there, there are no, not enough details, so I asked people to write substantives. I, I, I made a second version with more details. And then everyone just told me, OK, so there's this uh, a wave mounting with water eyes? I don't know. I'm confused. So I decided to, oh, maybe I just should add some, some smog to it. And then I, OK, what is this now? And then. Oh, it's a messy, scary, confusing, cold blue sharp. And then, then I could see that this was not the right approach for the icon. So I decided maybe since maybe you can go to iceberg, iceberg, there's this idea of the deep web, and maybe an iceberg is cool. So wh what is this? And everyone say, uh, uh, nothing. <laughs> That's some app thing. So I kept trying. I kept like making other designs, and I think this one was, was better, and people start seeing that there's an iceberg, there is like an iceberg with a magical mountain thing. And that's, that was finally the, the latest iteration of the logo. I had multiple iterations between them. And they, they were like, oh, it's a magic diamond mountain with an iceberg crystal inside, so which is, which is more what I was going for in the beginning. And finally, the last point I want is, Keep the user in control of his data. That's something we don't do on the current web that we can totally do on the, on the, on the decentralized web. And so just in MIST, for example, we allow the user to, I was, as I was telling in the beginning, the user can just tell the app who he is. So the user starts all apps anonymously, and then he can choose one account to review himself. And it's a great way that the user, you don't need to, maybe you don't need to have a login password information on, on your app. You don't need to keep all the, that information on the, on the app side. Maybe all you need to do is ask for the browser for it to show you some sort of, of, of proof of ownership of a public, public key. And it, your app will be simpler, and it will be a better experience for the user because the app can, he can keep his private data on his own browser. So I think those are the six things I wanted to, to tell about how to design for, for the new app.